What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of FUD TV. Today, we're going to be talking about an ICO that has recently come to my attention as I was out and about in Los Angeles last night, and a friend was thinking of investing into it. So instead of boring them with all of my thoughts over the dinner table, I thought I'd just make this episode and put it out into the world for anyone who might be considering investing into the APA token. We're going to be going through the product, the team, their backgrounds, the roadmap, the technology, how far along it is, the history of the company, and we're going to analyze the market a little bit in general to try to get some sense of whether this product is truly poised to take over the art market and whether it's actually a reality that they'll be able to realize their goals of making APA the token of the fine art economy. I hope you enjoy our ICO review of the APA all public art token starting right now. APA is going to use blockchain technology to register artists' identities, and then they can put certain physical objects like RFID trackers or QR codes on the actual physical art pieces. And when they mail and ship them, those transactions would then be recorded on the blockchain, and those pieces would then be verifiable using blockchain technology once they arrive in their target location. So digging into their white paper, APA describes itself as a peer-to-peer, counterfeit-free, transparent art marketplace powered by blockchain technology. APA hopes to disrupt what they value as a $45 billion a year market. They point to a drop-off in auction houses as an opportunity for smaller retailers or direct peer-to-peer transactions to start to flourish. They claim that $16.9 billion in 2016 was a staggering drop from the $20.8 billion collected by auction houses in 2015. This seems to be an opportunity that they'd like to leap upon and become the central player within. So one of the things that I'm really going to be focusing on is APA's ability to penetrate the art market already. Since they've been running since 2015, you'd think that they would have some history or some building of their community already showing that they are in position to start buying and trading art on their platform. It seems to me like the crux of their offering will be the ID process in which art can really be validated here on the blockchain once the piece of art arrives from the vendor, we'd want to validate that it's from them, that it preserves its history, and then if it's resold, we would want to be able to preserve the history of that object so that that original, that next buyer knows what the original vendor is authentic. So this is really what it comes down to here is the ability to track art on the blockchain. Yes, I do believe that there's some validity and some value in having all art transfers publicly visible on the blockchain, but really what most buyers care about is the authenticity of their piece, not being able to publicly view all transactions around the world. It seems that the real value add here is in the tracking and whatever whatever technology they're going to employ for actually physically tracking and authenticating different pieces of art on the blockchain. So after registering as an artist, you have to post your art in exchange for APA tokens. That's all you can sell them for on the site. You cannot sell them for fiat currency. I think this is the part of the equation that I'm a little bit concerned about as the APA tokens will at first not be tradable on any exchanges. And if we hope for it to be tradable on an exchange, we will need to have confidence in the team. So we need to go to the team to find some answers as to what their capabilities are and what we can expect from them in the near, medium, and long-term futures as they go and develop the APA project. The CEO, Graham Goddard, is a well-spoken and impressive individual, but it's worth noting that he is not a technologist and he is, in fact, a fine artist, and he doesn't have any experience in building technology products. If I've learned anything through my journey of building multiple new emerging technologies in the startup space, Sometimes it takes some experience to be able to estimate and anticipate the pitfalls of your project, especially when you're building and developing revolutionary new blockchain technologies. I'm not saying it's impossible for an artist to create a blockchain technology. I'm just saying it's far, far less likely. Gustavo Guimarães, I'm sorry for butchering that, uh, is a very experienced blockchain engineer. He's got a lot of amazing experience on his resume, and he's been involved with multiple notable projects in the startup tech space. I think what's really concerning to me here is that Gustavo uh, doesn't have APA token listed on his experience or his current work experience. And more importantly, he just recently co-founded something called the Samsara Protocol out of Berlin, Germany which is an open source decentralized application which enables bespoke, provably fair lotteries and randomized draws. So it seems like while Gustavo is a very accomplished individual, the APA token is either not his main project 
are not really something that he's disclosing as a project he's working on yet. Both of those things hurt my confidence a little bit more in the APA project. Rashawn is a good example of someone who has started and launched many projects successfully. He seems to have a really good background in finding capital and bringing it to projects that need that capital and then marketing them and giving them the sort of energetic support that it needs. Again, as you dig into Rashawn's LinkedIn, you see no mentions of the APA token. In fact, you just see that he's got these overarching uh, marketing and angel investment groups, which he's working with a what seems like a wide number of companies. So this is by no means, in my reading of this, his number one project or even necessarily at the top of his priority list. So now that we've introduced you to the APA project, I want to talk about a couple of the things that concerned me as a prospective investor. Here's one of them that stands at the top of the list. The artist receives that token and we on the platform on All Public Art will be incentivizing these artists uh, to basically use their tokens to get art supplies and to get materials for their studios at, at really great rates. So um, the token will be really, really beneficial for, for artists and we're excited to, to have them use it. This is really concerning to me. Where Goddard hopes for this token to become useful is that once the artist receives payment for their work, then instead of being able to cash out into the currency of choice, they'll have to then respend those tokens within the ecosystem to get art supplies but that's now assuming that these fine artists are actually going to find the supplies that they need through this ecosystem. And more importantly, we're going to be relying on the APA team to form relationships with suppliers and producers in that industry. So essentially, we're not just asking for Goddard and the team to build a marketplace of art our traders, we're also asking them for, to build a back-end ecosystem of supplies. This is a doubly difficult task. Probably the most concerning thing of all is when you go to allpublicart.com, the website that they've supposedly been developing for three years now since 2015, it's really just a collection of images and when you click on them, there's almost no more information. There's just a short, short description, and this is somewhere in the port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. This website, if it's been being built for three years, is, is really of low quality, to be honest, and it works very slowly. For me, I have a lot of concerns now coming out around whether APA or All Public Art has any ability to build a marketplace. Producers of art, artists, and collectors of art, buyers. Right now, I'm not seeing any evidence that they've done that so far. When you have a project like this, when you have a great idea at ICO stage, it's all about execution. If you're not sure that the team can execute, you need to find reasons or reinforcements as to why they've shown that they can. By looking at this marketplace, by looking at allpublicart.com, it looks like they have not yet accomplished their goal of creating any kind of marketplace where people are buying and trading art. So just because they introduce a token doesn't mean that they've created the marketplace. They've just changed the purchasing mechanism within a marketplace that doesn't exist yet. We know that there's a leader in the space in Sotheby's. Look, I can buy, I can go to auction, private sales, shop, departments. I can do all this stuff and I know that Sotheby's, I can trust that Sotheby's is doing their part to authenticate the artwork. Is this blockchain certified? No. But is this good enough for many art collectors? Most likely. Now the question is whether Sotheby's is going to choose to use APA's all public art token or whether they'll simply use the technology of blockchain identification for their own operation. This is the big error that I think a lot of people make when investing into young startups that are in the ICO or blockchain space is that they think that just because the idea is good that the execution will follow and that leaders in the space will somehow just crumble because blockchain is being used by one of their competitors. The reality is that that's not true. They still need to build the marketplace. They still need to build out their buyers and sellers just like everybody else. And then once those buyers and sellers are interested in their marketplace, they can then increase the validity, the legitimacy, and the speed of transactions of that marketplace by using cryptocurrencies. But to do that before they have the marketplace is very, very, very speculative. It's also worth understanding that there are other people trying to do RFID blockchain technologies that are not art specific. The leader, in my opinion, in this space is Walton. WTC Walton Chain is actually not only manufacturing the RFID chips themselves, but they have their own blockchain. Whereas APA is going to be running off the Ethereum blockchain, which is not necessarily built to interface with RFID chips, the Walton Chain is also going to be built to, to work perfectly with their RFID technology, which they are also manufacturing. Right now, Walton is in partnership talks with GlaxoSmithKline, a top 10 pharmaceutical producer globally, as well as H&M, Zara, and the, there's a lot of suspicion that they'll be talking to Walmart soon. 
So if they're already working with the top distributors of products globally, then it's not so crazy that they might partner with someone like Sotheby's to help bring blockchain RFID identification to their fine art marketplace. The reality is that Sotheby's would most likely choose to go with an industry leader when choosing their blockchain technology, or they'll just build a blockchain out themselves. There's really no reason why Sotheby's can't do it if they're making so much revenue in the online space. It seems like it would be a likely move for them to try to use these technologies to re-embolden and reinforce their marketplace. As an investor, I'd be extremely concerned about other RFID technologies that are much farther along in development. If we go to the all public art white paper, we can see how they are really not far along in their development phase. Their APA platform implementing the blockchain into their existing marketplace, which as we saw, isn't much to talk about, is only 5%. That doesn't mean that they're building out a robust marketplace. They're just implementing the token into their existing marketplace, which doesn't have much going on. They are not technologists and they're not even 10% done with building their platform. They've been building supposedly the all public art website since 2015 and it really doesn't look like much. So them saying they're 5% done with their development certainly raises a lot of alarm bells and shows me that this project is a long, long, long way from delivering on any of its promises. And while it might be able to benefit from some type of hype cycle, the reality is, is that investing in this ICO is going to be very tricky to get out of. So the key thing to understand here is that the APA token will not be readily tradable at the beginning. Of course, all ERC-20 tokens are tradable at some level in that you can go to EtherDelta or IDEX to trade them across the actual blockchain from a peer-to-peer -peer standpoint. However, in a centralized fashion, like many people are used to trading on Coinbase or Binance or GDAX or whatever you use, this is not going to be available for some time. And given the team, it doesn't look like they have the financial background or the CEO sort of background that would help levy this project and bring it into an exchange like a mainstream exchange. It's going to be very difficult for APA to get listed on an exchange unless it gets widely, widely adopted and gets a ton of hype behind it, which at this point, it seems like a lot of the hype has been injected by the company and is not very genuinely being held and transmitted through the community, which is very small. So I'd say there's some significant challenges here and that even if you invest and even if the token does go up three, four times in value, you'd be left with a conflict of say I invested 30 to 50 grand in this ICO, I would not necessarily be able to exit that position even if the token went up in value. Sure, we can trade around Ether Delta and IDEX, however, the volume there is expected to be extremely low and the ability to exit your position in a favorable way is going to be even lower. Whenever you have so many bonus programs, just like this has many layers of sale, pre-sale, bonus, pre-bonus, the reality is, is that you're creating different price points all along the entry. Understanding pre-sale bonuses is also key here. According to game theory, whenever there's a pre-sale bonus, it doesn't matter the token price because if someone paid less than you, their actual price would allow them to exit their position before you are, allowing for them to have control over your price in a way that is negative. Essentially, the pre-sale bonuses are not really good for early stage investors unless they're at the earliest, earliest, earliest stage of the pre-sale. In conclusion, the APA token and project has extraordinarily high hopes to disrupt what is a vibrant and very profitable industry in the global art market. However, in its practical execution, it seems like they're going to have a ton of challenges living up to the promises that they've made. They're being led by a fine artist, not a technologist. A lot of the big technology backing that they're supposedly having aren't even listing the project on their LinkedIn's. Their current marketplace is almost non-existent. I can't see any trading or any trading volume going through there at the moment. And they've already been in business now for three years. APA is going to have numerous challenges in executing their vision. They first need to build a marketplace of art collectors and art producers. Second, they need to build a marketplace of supplies and supplies producers. And hopefully, and hopefully they're able to get those supplies at an economically beneficial rate or else there's no point in artists going through them. Third, they need to successfully develop and implement their blockchain technology and make it work with the RFID technology that they keep talking about. The big problem with that is that there are already leaders in this space that are looking like 900 pound gorillas that are going to be very, very, very hard to stop in Walton Chain, V Chain, and even Wabi. So there's many ways that this project could really fall apart and not end up reaching its goals and not end up delivering the value that it's promised to its investors.
Furthermore, there might be some accessibility issues as it seems unlikely that this token would get listed anytime soon on a big centralized exchange or at any point in the near future. So even if the coin 5Xs, it would be a bit of a chore to exit your position and there's no guarantee that you'd be able to do so. The reality is, is that APA has a lot of question marks to resolve before this project becomes a guarantee or any kind of layup for the team. And for this investor, I think I'll be staying away for now Yet I'll be pleasantly surprised to see them make some motion and answer some of these question marks in the near future. Please remember that we are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice and everything you've heard here is simply our opinion. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, of course, please smash that like button. Obviously, commenting and sharing the content is the ultimate form of flattery, but regardless, we thank you for showing up and watching. I'm Elio Trades and this has been another episode of FUD TV.